ברוך אתה השם, אלוקינו מלך העולם, שהחיינו וקיימנו והגיענו לזמן הזה. Finishing Shacht is a personal triumph for me. It has been a seven and a half year journey, and I really cannot believe that I have reached this milestone. Since I started learning the learning Daf Yomi cycle, uh, mid-cycle, um, I am finishing with Masachet Ketubot. How fitting it is to finish Shas with this Masachet, as Ketubot is commonly referred to in the Talmudic world as the mini Shas, since it contains many of the topics discussed all over Shas, a kind of review of the past seven plus years. I would like to dedicate this siyum in memory of my father, Joseph Kahana, Yosef ben Tzvi HaKohen Rachel Zichrona Levracha. My father was a mathematician and he delighted in the proof theorem building that is the template of the Talmud. My father learned Gemara regularly and he both loved to learn and to share it with us. I have memories of a 20 hour family road trip where the only soundtrack playing was Rabbi Daniel Weiss's Gemara Shir tapes. As a 10 year old, you can imagine that this was less than thrilling, but to watch the joy on my father's face was worth everything. So I'm sure you are asking, how did I get started? My first encounter with Gemara was in the sixth grade at SAR Academy, where I was taught Masachet Brachot. I still remember the Gemara that was taught. We had a dynamic teacher and the material really spoke to me. This initial spark was kept alive in my house where Gemara Sugiot were a common topic of conversation at our dinner table. In fact, when I started learning Daf Yomi, I was surprised by how many different topics I came across that sounded familiar to me. Upon reflection, it was because I had heard my father discussing it in our house. Fast forward many years, college, marriage, kids, kids, more kids, and in 2009, moving to Israel. Then in 2012, Rabbanit Michelle Farber started teaching Daf Yomi in her home, and she gently encouraged me to join. Michelle seemed to know me well enough to know that I would really enjoy it, but life was busy and I simply didn't think that I had the space in my life at that point. Over the next two plus years, I would consistently hear from my friends how much they were enjoying it. In May of 2005, we had Shabbat lunch with friends and the wife who was learning Daf Yomi with Michelle described to me how much she enjoyed it. She was so enthusiastic about it. She mentioned that they were just finishing Masechet Ketubot and that I should join for the next Masechet. True, life was still busy. Maital was only six years old, but I decided to try. I showed up for the first day of Masechet Nidarim and I immediately fell in love. The material, material we were learning was fantastic. The mathematical conversation of the sages appealed to my computer science background and reminded me of the discussions with my father. I also really enjoyed the camaraderie around Michelle's dining room table. Every morning we would share the little parts of our life and then dive into the daf. Additionally, I felt that learning daf yomi was the perfect way to set up the day. I started with this daily exercise for the brain and I felt invigorated. During that first year, my father's health declined. Thankfully, I was able to spend a lot of time with him. During this time, I would share with him the different topics we were learning, and he loved it. He would often tell me how proud he was of me for learning Talmud. I cherish those words. As I reflect on my journey, I often had thoughts of stopping. You see, dedicating time to learning Daf every day was sometimes a bit overwhelming, but the memory of my father and his support of my learning helped me persevere. Learning Daf Yomi became a way for, not, for me to remember and stay connected with my father. I would like to digress for a moment to take the opportunity to express Hakarata Tov to Rabbanit Michelle Farber. You are a remarkable teacher and a very dear friend. You are an inspiring person that I get to spend time with either live or by podcast on a daily basis. It is a real privilege. Thank you for reigniting in me a passion for Gemara learning. Michelle, what I am also very appreciative of is that your class helped me develop an even deeper, an even deeper connection with my father in his final years. 
As I mentioned, I often discuss with, with my father the sugiot that we covered in the daf. He was particularly excited to share with me the Russell paradoxes that arise in Talmud. Bertrand Russell, an English mathematician, challenged efforts to axiomatize set theory with a paradox, which has become known as Russell's paradox. We will go through one in a moment. As a mathematician, my father delighted in finding these paradoxes in the Talmud. For him, they were the intersection of pure logic and the Talmud. My father's favorite Russell's paradox is connected to the topic of Edim Zomimim, discussed in Masechik Tubot. I will explain. We just celebrated Rosh Hashanah. In Jewish law, the new month is declared by the court when two qualified witnesses testify that they have seen the horns of the new moon. To be a qualified witness, one must be Jewish, male, and above the age of 13. Now, in general, any set of witnesses can be disqualified by a second set of witnesses who place the first set somewhere other than where they could have witnessed that about which they have testified. This process is commonly known as hazama. So suppose that a set of witnesses come to court and testify that they have seen the new moon and a second set of witnesses come to court and claim that the first set of witnesses were with them in a windowless cellar the whole night. However, one of the members of the second set is celebrating his 13th birthday on the Rosh Chodesh under consideration. Let's analyze. If we accept the first set, then today is Rosh Chodesh, and therefore both witnesses of the second set are qualified. Hence, we must believe the second set and disqualify the first set, and therefore it is not Rosh Chodesh. If it is not Rosh Chodesh, then the second set has a minor in it, and their toast testimony cannot be accepted then the first set is believed, and it is Rosh Chodesh. Thus, we have a paradox that if it is Rosh Chodesh, then it is not Rosh Chodesh. And if it is not Rosh Chodesh, then it is Rosh Chodesh. This logical paradox is known in Talmudic jargon as Galgal HaChozer. I would like to express thanks to Hashem first and foremost for providing me the opportunity to be in the right place, namely Renana Israel, and at the right time, 2015, to pursue this dream. This is not something I take for granted. I would also like to take this opportunity to thank all my supporters, to my mom, my kids, and my very learned husband, Benny. You were all patient with my preoccupation and supportive of my pursuit. You gave me the needed courage and confidence to persevere. To my kids, this journey has spanned many stages of your lives, whether weddings, army services, graduations, bar and bat mitzvahs, and births. My hope is that I have successfully shown you a path that can be walked with confidence and curiosity. Now, I would be remiss if I wouldn't bring up the concept of the link in the chain. This refers to our place in Jewish history. I come to learning not from a feminist perspective, but rather as a Jew, who together with those who came before me are preserving the link in the chain. My father used to say that we Jews are a vertical people. We are commanded to look back to our history and realize where we come from and recognize all the traditions that have been passed down to us. And in turn, we must look forward to our children and keep the chain going. It is with this in mind that I cherish the learning of the Talmud. Learning Talmud has invited me into the brilliant discourse and mathematical dialogue that takes place within its pages. It has broadened my understanding of Jewish halakha and as such has enhanced my connection to our legacy. I have immensely enjoyed this seven and a half year journey and I would highly encourage all of you to join me as I begin my second round. 